Hello everybody, my name is Mr. Kiro and I'm back with a brand new video. And today, I come here asking you a question. Did Lionel Messi deserve to win the Ballon d'Or? And my answer is yes, 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 yes. And I'll give you a couple reasons why I think some of you guys are finally gonna have the final slam dunk in this conversation. Cause all over Twitter, people are saying robbery, 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 not Ribery who should have won it, but hey, let, let's not talk about that season. But it, it's a robbery when Messi wins it, but never is apparently when Cristiano Ronaldo and others win it as well. Erling Haaland had a magnificent season, but did he have magnificent performances throughout that season? Because I feel like in the big games, the big players show up and Erling Haaland didn't show up in any semifinal or finals. And to me, that was a damning statement that absolutely destroyed his Ballon d'Or hopes. Everyone knows that you know it even if you are a Haaland fan. And you always fall back on the stats saying, well, he scored 52 goals in 51 games or whatever the stat, that insane number is. But I'm saying... It's okay to score hat-tricks against Wolves and West Ham and all the others. But against the top teams, when it matters the most, what do you do then? What do you do then? And the thing is about Erling Haaland, Man City, Man City gave him those goals. When you look at, because I, I, I was re-watching the ceremony there when, the, when he won that uh, Jared Muller trophy. Most of his goals are like one-touch touch, one, like one touch touches like towards goal, you know? They were like tap-ins, majority of them. And then I asked myself, how do people think, like how can you think this man is the best player in the world? I mean, he's a striker that that has the best team around him to give him those goals. But as, as an individual, can you say Man City would have not won the treble if it wasn't for Erling Haaland? I think you can because he came in and they won the treble and before they didn't. Of course, you can always say that. But when you look at the way they played in the semi-finals and final, they could have lost those games. They actually could have lost those games. And Erling Haaland wasn't a part of it. But when you look at Messi's World Cup, because obviously the World Cup is what decided what Messi, Messi decided that Messi would win the World Cup. I mean, would win the Ballon d'Or. If you take out Messi out of the Argentina squad, I don't think they could even make it out their group. I mean, they had Molina and... And some other guy at at like at fullbacks that I don't even know. And Messi gave a fantastic assist against Netherlands. Like in, I, I feel like the Ballon d'Or is about what you achieve and how you perform while achieving it. I don't think most of you guys can give me a great individual performance from Erling Haaland. You you can give me where like where he scored hat tricks, but can you give me where he said that he was the best player on the pitch? I don't think you can. And of course, you can tell me he won like 60 man of the matches because of hat tricks. But of course, when you, when you score a hat trick, you automatically earn the man of the match. But besides that, it's okay scoring hat tricks against low fodder teams. But can you do it against the top teams when it matters? Against Real Madrid, where was he? Against um, in Inter, where was he? Against Seville, where was he? In top games, he, he didn't perform. And Messi in the World Cup performed. Where it matters the most. In the final, he got a brace. People would like to say the penalties, penalties, penalties. Well, you still have to win those penalties. And and, and some of Holland's goals were penalties in that goal goal record breaking season. But of course, they never like they never say these things. And frankly, the argument normally shifts towards downgrading Messi's achievements. Saying, no, man, the FIFA World Cup was boring, was the worst one ever because of circumstances around it. Oh, man, it's, it, I mean, penalties and all that stuff. I'm saying, oh, my word. When you're trying to downgrade the hardest competition for a player to win, it's, I know you're done by then. Because the FIFA World Cup is, is without a doubt the hardest competition for a player to win. And the thing, the thing is, you can win the World Cup, but it depends who you're winning it for and who you're winning it with. I can say Neymar. Ne Neymar should have won at least one World Cup. And it's crazy that... I mean, I don't want to bash Neymar, but I, I, I'm, I'm just saying that Brazil team, they're always favorites. Like, how Man City were always favorites to win the Champions League, but whatever. They're always favorites to do what they didn't do. And by Brazil, I mean they were favorites in the World Cup and they don't end up even going that far in the World Cup. And Man City were always favorites to win the Champions League and always get knocked at the semifinals or quarterfinals in the Champions League. 
I get the argument that Haaland came in and they won and they won the treble. He has given the treble. But I say this. Most of today's greatest ever players will never win a World Cup. And, the, and, and to me, that just shows you the absolute pedigree of the World Cup itself. The, the World Cup is an absolute mammoth of a competition. Just look at Japan, what Japan did by beating Spain. And I think they knocked out Germany. Two juggernauts in, 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 on the world stage. Absolute juggernauts. What Morocco did to... Morocco beat who again? I think they beat Brazil? Or, or, or that was Croatia. Man, it's, it's, it's crazy, bro. So many... The thing is about the World Cup, it's a one and done game. So even the underdogs can just find that spirit to just beat everyone. Like, it's absolutely insane. And people will like to say, well, if you're saying you are the best performer at a World Cup and you win the World Cup, you should automatically win the Ballon d'Or, which is exactly what I'm saying. Why didn't Mbappe win it in 2018? And to this I say Mbappe should have won it in 2018. They actually made the entire trophy for Mbappe. The Copa Trophy, Mbappe was the first one to win it. Because they wanted to calm down. Because they can't give Bologna to 18 year olds that just came on the scene. And the fact is, it again, it matters who you're winning it for. I mean, Cristiano Ronaldo, the second best player in the world in my, in, in my view. In my generation. Second best player ever. He will never win the World Cup. And it's sad. Because Portugal, Portugal have never won it. And the fact that he will win the World Cup for Portugal. He will win it for Portugal and that is absolutely great it, ma it matters for what team you win it for and that and no one will ever say that Argentina team should have won the World Cup Messi absolutely elevated that team he performed throughout every single knockout phase it's a one and done game it's either you show up or you get out and he showed up every single time against the Netherlands he showed up against Croatia he showed up in the final he got a brace that's like in the final he was overshadowed by Mbappe I mean, the World Cup is such an insanely cutthroat competition. There are no second legs. It's one and done. You win or you lose. That's it. One 20 minutes max or penalties. Doesn't matter who wins or who gets. It's, it's so cutthroat. It's insane. It's insane, man. And thing is, whenever people like to hype up Messi, you know, hype up Holland's Holland, they're, all, they're always based it on stats. I'm like, sometimes the Ballon d'Or is about the eye test. The eye test. Does Erling Haaland scream best player in the world to you? He, she, he screams best player, best striker in the world, of course. Then then you, you, you can put up the stats. But best player in the world, best performance in the world, I think, I think it, it never falls down to that. Best consistent performances. And I think Messi doing it on the greatest stage can't be refuted. And again, previous Ballon d'Or winners, it all falls down to a moment or moments, not entire season. And that's frankly what the competition is and always was about. People would like to say they're blind to it, but it's, it, it's just the way it is. And I frankly feel like most Ronaldo fans wanted Holland to win because of stats. Because again, goals, 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 goals. Goals or anything that matters. Doesn't matter how how or where you get your goals, which is very very like one dimensional to me. And football is way more than that. It's either a message to create for Haaland or Haaland is completely out the game. And to me, that isn't the best player in the world. You, you can say, hey, he, he had a remarkable season. Of course, he had a season worth that'll be in the record books. But he just wasn't the best player for me. He just wasn't. And that's my opinion. And I always feel there's some biasism from us, and I include myself in this. I am a Messi fan, so I will be unintentionally biased towards Messi, and you can be a Holland fan, um, un unintentionally, uh, un unintentionally biased towards Holland. And I feel like people hype up the treble to be so great, and the fact and the fact that it was his first season there. But then I look at it, I'm like, would 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 Erling Haaland right? Would Erling Haaland, the number two himself, say, I would rather win the treble than it is than to win the World Cup for Norway? 
I mean, that's a crazy statement in itself. Because I think it matters for the it matters for which country you're winning the World Cup for and the squad you have around you. And Messi's squad, I don't think anyone predicted us. I mean, of course we did because we knew it was Messi's World Cup and, you know, the the romanticism of it and all that. But there's some biases. There's, there's some biases because we watch the Premier League so much that we see Haaland week in and week out. And frankly, we don't watch the French League. But Messi also won the French League. And the French League isn't held in high regard. But we can't just scoff at that he won the French League as well. And I think he got most assists or a decent number of assists and stuff like that. But that World Cup performance, man, it's the way he did it for me. The way he did it was so impressive. And again, people will like to go to the numbers, but I'm just saying, just watch the game. Watch the game against France, against Netherlands, against Croatia, and tell me who's the best player on the, on the pitch. Just tell me who is the best player on the pitch. Watch Man City against Bayern, against Wolves, against West Ham, against Arsenal, against Real Madrid, against Inter. Then tell me who's the best player on the pitch. And let's have and let's have a conversation. Who was the best player on the pitch when Erling Haaland got all those hat tricks? Was it Haaland? I could believe it, but I would very very much doubt it. For me, Erling Haaland, I don't want to bash him because of course what he did was absolutely remarkable. But he's he's like a he's like a gluttonous baby in a rich family. He can cry, and he will get what he wants. He can want a perfect cross. And then he can hit it in and he can get it from KDB. He can want someone to dribble in the box and just pass it to his feet. Phil Foden can do that. Bernardo Silva can do that. He has so many ways for, for people to create for him or give him what he wants. That it just... I mean, he's, he's almost playing football on like semi-pro difficulty. Or even amateur. I, I watched all of his goals. I'm like, my word. How lucky can you get? And, 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 and I, was, I was having this conversation with one of my friends. I'm like, as a player, right, how much better is Erling Haaland or how much more does he have to his game compared to Mikel Antonio at West Ham? And people are like, whoa, whoa. I know, I know he's better, but I'm saying what more does he have to his game compared to Mikel Antonio? I mean, I feel like they're so similar. Just like Erling Haaland's stats above everything, strength, speed, I mean, aer aerial presence and all that are just higher. But there's nothing more to it. He's just a buffed up version of Mikel Antonio. It might be harsh, but I think I'm onto something there. He isn't like... <sighs> Maybe a Dortmund, because I think I'm being harsh. There was times where Erling Haaland would take the ball and run into space and score. But last season, man, his Ballon d'Or nomination season, I'm like... Brother, this guy isn't the best player on the pitch sometimes. <laughs> he just isn't. And Messi in the World Cup, the hardest competition to win again, inevitably is the best player on the pitch this season. And that's why I think Lionel Messi, Lionel Messi's Ballon d'Or win is deserved. I do. I don't know what you guys think, but of course... Your comments are always welcome here. I'll always read them and reply. And let me hear your thoughts. Oh, again, just to close off this video, I think Messi should have, should like earn the world, like, earn the ball and door. Not, not just because he won the World Cup. It's the way in which he won it. And Erling Haaland, I mean, phenomenal season, but whenever he, he had his best performances and I mean the hat tricks and all that because his season was dictated by the fact that he smashed the goal record in the Premier League and people like to say it's his first season and all that and that's good in hindsight right I mean I mean that's good in general but whenever he did that would you say he was the best player on the pitch I mean of course he will win man of the match when whenever he, would, he uh, score, score a hat trick of course of course he would but can you say the eye test the eye test. Was he the best player there? And I think the system that Man City uses with him just staying there, like scoring rebounds, scoring tap-ins. I mean, he, he's the greatest poacher, greatest goal scorer of the year. That's why he won the Jordan Muller thing. But best player, yeesh, man. If you can't even create for yourself, 
in my eyes, I don't think I would have personally put my top three would have been Messi number one, Rodri number two, and Kylian Mbappe number three, and Haaland probably fifth, and De Bruyne fourth. Hmm. I wouldn't put De Bruyne actually. I'll, I'll put Haaland fourth. Because in the big games, the finals, semifinals, the, the season defining games, tournament deciding games, the big players show up. That might be a, a bit, you know, it can change depending on the situation, but that's that that's the general rule. Instead, padding against Wolves and West Ham's and, and the others just isn't it for me. Please, again, show. I'm looking forward to uh, hearing your comments and thoughts in the comments below. And all that's left for me to say, <laughs> that's too quick, is to wish all of you a very good day. Cheers, guys.